In this video, we are diving deep into the heart of Nepal's capital city, Kathmandu. Join me as we explore the historic Kathmandu Darbar Square, soak up the vibes at Swayambhunar, also known as the Mangi Temple, and pay a visit to the sacred Pashupadina Temple. But wait, there is more. We will hop on a thrilling gondola ride to Chandragiri Hills to catch a glimpse of Mount Everest, the world's tallest mountain. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. I'm Don Bongers, unleashing craziest adventures around the world. I am traveling to the capital city of Nepal, Kathmandu. As we are about to depart the Delhi airport, a strange thing happened. Look at this. They are waving us goodbye. That's so sweet. I've taken hundreds of flights and never seen something like this. Now we are flying parallel to the world's tallest mountain range, the Himalayas. After a short two-hour flight, now we are landing in Kathmandu. Finally, London, Kathmandu, Nepal. After immigration, I am in a prepaid taxi going to the city center. It's only a half an hour ride, but it can take up to an hour depending on the traffic. I'm in Kathmandu, the capital city of Nepal. The reason why I'm here is to catch a glimpse of the world's tallest mountain, Everest, in the Himalaya. From the Kathmandu city itself, you cannot see the Mount Everest. But if you travel a little bit outside of Kathmandu to Chandragiri Hills, you can take a gondola up there. From there, you can actually have a sneak peek of the world's tallest mountain, Mount Everest. First thing first, since I'm already in the city, let me explore the city a little bit. Kathmandu to Durbar Square right now. It seems like it's a complex of temples. Lots and lots of temples. Durbar Square is also known as Hanuman Doga Square. The square has been the traditional center of the city and served as a royal palace for the Malla kings who ruled the Kathmandu Valley during 16th century. The square is more than just temples. It's a labyrinth of palaces, courtyards, surrounded by several shrines and temples that are significant for both Buddhists and Hindus. Some of these structures date back several centuries. Each corner screams history. So many carvings and sculptures all blow your mind. An earthquake in 2015 caused some damage to these beautiful structures and the restoration efforts are ongoing. <laughs> Who are defaced this historic building? Shame on you. One thing you gotta be careful is the roads. These vehicles here, they have absolutely no regard for the pedestrian. Several times, I almost got flipped by a vehicle while I was walking down the street. Sidewalks are almost non-existent on the old streets here. Next, I went to Swayambhudan, or as the locals call it, the Monkey Temple. Swayambhudan is one of the holiest Buddhist stupas in Nepal, standing majestically atop a hill in the Kathmandu Valley.
These stairs will lead us to the Swayambhunath Stupa. So I'm here at the Swayambhu right now. The view from here is absolutely magnificent. You can see the whole Kathmandu right behind. People usually come here to pray, feel peaceful, and enjoy the beautiful nature. It's a serene spot where you can connect with your inner peace. There are lots of monkeys hanging out here, which is why it's called the monkey temple. And it seems like the people here like to feed them and take care of them. It seems like Soyambunad is a mixture of nature, spirituality, and some playful monkeys. Now I'm walking towards the Pashupatinath temple. It's considered as one of the most holiest Hindu temples in this area. It's almost on the other end of the city. It's about an hour or so walk. So I thought I like, might as well just walk and explore the city. Why not? Look at this, this is how you cross a busy intersection in this part of the world. Seems like these people are a little adventurous. I've been walking for almost an hour now. Seems like I'm almost there. It's pretty close. Pashupadina Temple is dedicated to Lord Shiva, one of the principal deities in Hinduism. This famous Hindu temple sits on the banks of the Bhagmadi River. There are also cremation platforms along the river. I'm witnessing a cremation ceremony as I speak. So this is the Pasupadinath temple. It's, it's huge, it's ginormous. It's, a, it's a spread out around the vast area of land. And it seems like to go into the holiest place inside the temple, I have to take off my shoes. And seeing what I've seen these days and on the ground, I'm not feeling very comfortable about taking my shoes off. So, I'm gonna skip that part. So I'm just gonna walk around the perimeter of the temple and then just enjoy the beauty from the outside rather than stepping inside. Pashupadina Temple is not just a place for worship. It's a hub of cultural and spiritual activities. I am waiting for my two-wheeler taxi because he should be somewhere here. There he is. Most time ever in my life I've been on a two-wheeler taxi. So we are going to Chandragiri Hill. Chandragiri Hills is about an hour away from the city center and that's where you can catch a glimpse of the world's tallest mountain, the Everest. My chauffeur is sort of freaking me out by playing on his cell phone while riding the motorcycle. Luckily, I arrived safely at the base station. So I'm right here at the Chandragiri Hills at the base station. So I'm gonna be taking a gondola ride from here to all the way to the top. So I'm ready to get to the Chandragiri Hills and uh, now I'm waiting in line to take the gondola up the hill. I hope I will be able to catch a glimpse of the Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. That's all the reason why I'm here for. But, so let's see how it goes. We 
we're going up to the Chandragiri Hills so yeah, and the gondola, they call it cable car here. I think it's about 10-15 minutes right up there. Absolutely magnificent. happened but uh, the gondola stopped in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it seems like we are stuck here forever. This thing is not moving. Until now I was super excited so I didn't feel anything but when I look down from here I'm a little bit scared if I'm being honest. Thank goodness it stopped moving again. If you really want you can hike up this hill. It's only gonna take four to five hours. Or you can pay $22 and get up there in 15 minutes in this gondola. So after the scary gondola ride, I'm at the top station. I'm at the top of the Sandrigiri Hills. I can already see the Himalayas in the horizon. One thing I notice about Nepal is no matter where you go, you will always find a temple or shrine or something that related to spirituality. This is Bahalishram Mahadev temple and on the other side there is a view tower. I eagerly climbed to the top of the view tower to have a look at the world's tallest mountain, the Mount Everest. I zoomed my camera all the way in and scrambled around to spot Mount Everest among numerous other mountains in the Himalayas, but no success. Desperate attempt, I even pointed my camera through the telescope. The Everest is behind me, but you cannot see it. I tried so hard to find it, but I couldn't. One of the fellow tourists pointed the telescope towards the Mount Everest. You couldn't capture it in the camera because it was very faint. It's a cloudy and hazy day. If you come here on a clear, sunny day, you might be able to catch a glimpse of the Mount Everest, the world's tallest mountain. Food tasting time. I have a tradition. Whenever I travel to a new country, I make it to a point to try the most popular local food, whether I like it or not. I decided to try some chicken momo. Looks delicious. Momos are a type of steam-filled dumplings in Nepali cuisine. So you dip it in the sauce, and then you... It's pretty delicious. Really like it. Then I got some Nepali tea. The weather is a little chilly. It's not too cold, but uh, it's cold enough, I would say. About like 12 degrees Celsius, something like that. The cold weather and the hot tea, perfect combination. It's not just a regular tea. It's got some kind of spices in it. You can taste it. I cannot quite put my finger on what kind of spice it is. But uh, anyway, it's pretty delicious. Even if I didn't get to see the Mount Everest, this place is absolutely beautiful. And it's time for me to say goodbye to Chandragiri Hills. So I take the gondola back to the base station. Even though it's a little bit more expensive, I decided to take a real taxi back to the town. The two-wheeler taxi guy was a little reckless on the way here, 
I'm not saying everybody like that, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Next, I go to check out Azan Bazaar, one of the oldest and most popular local markets in Nepal, located in the historical center of Kathmandu. You can buy almost anything under the sky here, from books to textiles to electronics, you name it. From there, I went to Tamil, which has been a popular destination for tourists, truckers and backpackers for many years. Tamil is known for its lively nightlife scene with plenty of bars and clubs. In short, Kathmandu is a fascinating mix of history, bustling markets and the stunning Himalayas. Whether you are strolling through Darbar Square, experiencing the spirituality of Swayambhuna Stupa or soaking in Tamil's lively atmosphere, the city has something for everyone. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.